All right. Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Uh, thankful for, for being here. Man, God is good all the time and all the time he is good. I didn't say that to try to get you all to, you know, fill in the blanks. Uh, truly, I, I do believe God is good all the time. Even in the times when God says no, I have learned to be thankful for his no's. Many people are saying, I thank God for the doors that he opened. But I actually have learned to thank God for the doors that he closed. Amen. Because there were a lot of doors that I was trying to walk through that I thought was going to be a blessing. And I was so mad when the doors were closed. And God didn't allow it. And I'm thinking, Lord, I'm doing all of this stuff trying to please you. And this was going to be a blessing. And it was going to help me financially. And I was going to pay my tithes. It was going to bless the church. And this is how, how Lord, I was going to do so much for you. And I had no idea the hell that it could have caused. Because had that door been open, and God sees what we cannot see. The Bible says we learn in part. God doesn't learn in part. He knows what's coming around the corner. God has a much different perspective, view-wise, than we do. You all understand what I'm saying? I can see down the street, but God, from an aerial view, the Bible says he sits high and he looks low. So he can see all of the different things that's coming from all of the different angles and areas. And God knew what was coming my way. And had some doors been open that I tried to walk through or that I tried to force open, we would have been hurting financially because we would have taken a bill that I thought the business was going to allow, not knowing that the business was getting ready to fold up. So I have learned when something don't go through, don't trip. Don't get upset. Don't don't just, you know, many people become despondent and, and all worried and Lord, why didn't you? I have learned God once again through my experience. And all of my experiences have showed that God knows exactly what he's doing, even when we don't. So I'm thanking God for the yeses, and I'm thanking him for the noes. I wish you all would get to the place where you could see God even in the noes, or it's not always no, sometimes it's not yet. I know this ain't going to sound biblical, y'all. I, I, I ran out of time, but I was going to get my ticket for the night. For the one billion dollars, you know, for the, 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 the one billion dollar lottery, it's a two dollar ticket or a two fifty ticket or whatever. I, I spent six dollars on, on a burger when I had a refrigerator full of food at home. To me, that six dollars on a burger was worse than the two fifty on the ticket. I've explained that, and I know there's a lot of people who, who don't agree and you don't like my theology. Again, I say, if you can show it to me in the scriptures, if you can prove it to me in the Bible, where the Bible said don't pay the lottery, fine. But if you can't show it to me, if you cannot prove that my 250 was not being a good steward, but spending $6 on a burger when I have a refrigerator full of food that I'm getting ready to throw out, because every week we clean out the refrigerator the night before trash comes. Show me where spending six dollars going out to eat is better than spending two fifty on a lottery ticket, and I'll tell you fine. Don't try to make your gospel my gospel. Amen. Give me the word, not your interpretation of it. God don't need our help. Anyway, uh, I digress. I said all that to say it's good to be here. So. Uh, you all, this this may or may not be the conclusion of this uh, this series of lessons. We started talking about the psychology of God maybe three weeks ago. And if I can be very transparent with you, this has probably been one of the hardest series I have ever had to try and teach. I think it's a great idea. I understand what I'm trying to do, but I cannot find the information that I'm looking for to be able to give it to you in the way that I want. And I could not figure out why, but I may have an idea. So if, if you all will just kind of follow me, follow with me. 
The whole idea behind the psychology of God is the Bible says for a husband for him to know his wife. As the, as the father, I know everybody in my house. I know my wife. I know my kids. I know my kids better than they know themselves. They don't think so. They think that they, you know, Dad, you're not there. I can use words and you don't understand those words. I can do a dance and you can't do the dance. So, you know, uh, I'm much further along, really, than you think that I am. And, and you know, uh, there's nothing new in the world. You can do a dance and it's just a derivative of every new line dance they got ain't nothing but the electric slide with a new name. They do one more dip, they do one more to the left, one more to the right, but it's, it is what it is. But, I figured if I could learn, I, I, I have faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, but faith is the substance of things hoped for. When you realize where your hope comes from, when you realize that God is truly your source and other things, people, jobs, whatever, are resources. So it comes from God and God funnels it through people. You all understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So when, when I understood how God operated, it made it easier for me to trust Him because I understood the way that He operated. I figured if I could get you to really understand the way that God operated and how he thought that you would be able to become closer to him understanding his thoughts. If the Bible says that we are to know our wives so that I know what makes her tick, I know what, what makes her angry, I, I know how to, uh, quote unquote, how to woo her, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I know how to irritate her. I know how to say things to her that will make her leave me alone. You all understand what I'm saying? I figured if, if we can become more intimately familiar with God's thoughts, it would make it easier for us to trust Him. That's possible, but I can't do a crash course. There is no cliff notes for the mind of God, if that makes sense. Everybody familiar with the term cliff notes? In, in college, you have this great big old book. Well, somebody said amen, but that, that might be some who don't. So I want to... Let me not look at my kids no more tonight. For the term cliff notes, you got this big book, and, and you were supposed to read the whole book. Uh, cliff notes had a book that was just a portion of the side that kind of summarized it up, gave you a general idea of what the whole book said, just the summary. So, but there are no cliff notes to God. And if you want to really know God, the only way to really know God is to know all of this. Man, I can't give you all of this in a day. I can, to some degree, though, give you, even though I wouldn't call it the cliff notes, and, and it's, it's not even a summary, I'll just give you what I got. But when I try to ask the question, Lord, how, how come this is so difficult? Brothers and sisters, this is where I tell you, you cannot pray against God's word. You cannot pray Lord, I love my kids. I love my family. Uh, don't let the end of the world come because that means my family won't be able to grow. Lord, don't let evil come into my house. When God says, everybody, everybody is going to suffer a little while. All of us are going to have some period of suffering. If I pray, Lord, please don't ever let me suffer, that's not a realistic prayer. Lord, please don't let her ever let me experience hardship. How can your faith grow if you never have hardship? 
Lord, don't, don't let it rain no more. Even when the prophet prayed to stop the rain, it wouldn't forever. There was a period of time. I was mentioning to someone yesterday, we, we, uh, we had a big job to do, and right towards the end, it started sprinkling. And I'm like, Lord, we really need to finish up this job. If you will hold off the job so we can finish cutting this yard, we got acres of yards to cut. If we can... Hold off the job the rain. Hold off the rain. Okay, hold off on the rain. Thank you. If you can hold off the rain so that we can finish the job. But God did. It just sprinkled and we were able to finish the job and we got done with it. A job that we said we had allocated two days before we were able to get it done in one day. But when I finished, I explained to the crew that I was working with, we are praying for God to hold the rain. But there is some former who's praying for God to bring the rain. You all understand what I'm saying? They're saying even with all the rain that we experienced a few weeks ago, Missouri is in a drought. That we, uh, uh, they, they are calling and asking for us not to, to just be water in the grass because there's not a lot of water out there. This drought ha has caused some of the reservoirs to dry up. So while I'm praying and asking God to hold off the rain, there's a farmer who's saying I need the rain so that my crops can grow, so that everybody can eat, and he's praying for rain. Who is God going to listen to? Is he going to just stop the rain around my yards? No. So when I get done praying, no matter what I pray, I always figure and end with, Lord, let your will be done. You know what's best. Somebody is saying, Lord, don't let it rain because I want to take my girl out on a picnic. Somebody else is saying, Lord, my house is on fire. Please bring the rain so it helps put the fire out. You all understand what I'm saying? So um, I figure if, if we could really, really get to the mind of God, it will help us understand Him and help us understand even His yeses and His noes where it concerns us. In trying to figure out how come this was becoming so hard, God told me, I'm not going to go against my word. I'm not going to make an exception for you, Lonzo. And I'm like, you know, first of all, God, maybe you shouldn't call me by my name, you know, call me pastor, because I'm, I'm after your heart. I'm, I'm here to do your job. The only reason why I'm doing this is for you. If it was up to me, I wouldn't be here. I'd be somewhere else. I'd be doing something else. I'd be, you know, I, I'd have a whole new line of work. Pastoring is not my line of work that I'm interested in. But most people don't volunteer for this kind of work. Y'all have to understand that. There are people who have a zeal and, and want to do it, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with wanting to, to do the will of God. But if you really understood what all it involved, Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. So when I'm asking God how come this, this is so hard, he said, because it's supposed to be. And I said, well, what do you mean it's supposed to be? And when I'm sitting there researching the, the, the mind of God and the thoughts of God and all of that, so that I can teach it to you. Look at verse 16. And, and this is what, are, are we there? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. It says, For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So God says, Why are you trying to teach me when I'm, un, I'm unteachable? I'm, if, if, if the scripture says my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts, why do you think that you can go in and research me enough to teach me to somebody else? They have to learn me, son, just like you did. Through experience, through the word. The Bible says study to show yourselves approved. I can't study enough for you. I wish I could, 
and as your pastor, I do study so that I can teach you and instruct you, but there is only so I can I can teach you knowledge, but I cannot teach you experience. I can teach you knowledge, but I can't teach you wisdom. Some things come only through experience. My wife and I have done our best to try and shield our kids from certain hurts. There are certain things we just don't want them to go through. But I understand that there are some things they are going to have to go through. And the only thing I can do is pray to God that he will take them through it like he took us through it. But you all, once again, this generation is, is not the same generation. The, the, the stuff that's happening today, it's, it's at a whole new level. We didn't, when I was growing up, and, and maybe with social media and all of that, we see things a lot more, uh, it's, it's, it's more visible and prevalent now than what it was. When we see police beatings, that's because we got more phones. Y'all, police been beating up folks for a long time. For a long time. If, believe it or not, and do your research, the police, the, the Department of Policing came from slavery. In order to find the runaway slaves, they had people who would go and patrol. So when they were talking about defunding the police and, and, and basically eradicating police and starting over there saying the police are doing what their DNA has informed them and has instructed them to do. Now, they, they tried to better it, but what they're saying was you can't better the cancer. Just get rid of it and start something new. I'm not here to, to, to go through all of that. I'm just saying giving you the, the, the background. But here we are trying to figure out where we are and, and how we're doing it. And sometimes we just have to allow them to go through it and figure it out for themselves and pray that God will keep them. And when when we were growing up and you went to school and somebody talked about your pro wings when they had on Nikes, they don't even have pro wings anymore, do they? See, Pro Wings was the, that was the brand name of Payless Shoe Store. <laughs> Some people were, like, Payless Shoe Store closed up, uh, what, six, seven years ago? One of the last Paylesses closed up in the St. Louis area. So, uh, you know, Payless had all of the knockoffs of all of the name brand shoes. So when you were wearing Payless shoes, and everybody talks about you, you know, y'all broke. Uh, all y'all eat is Aldi's and we shop at Schlucks. And I'm like, what's wrong with Aldi's? I thought Aldi's was cool. No. Schlucks is cool and Deerbirds is cool. Oh, well, I didn't know. So I was eating Smirios. I didn't know it was Cheerios. You know, my box just says cereal. Anyway, when they talked about us, we just either laughed alone, or when we got home, we told our mama what they said. Our mama said, sticks and stones may break our bones, but, oh, okay, cool. So when they said something to me, we said, sticks and stones break our bones, but your words won't hurt me. And you kept going. We didn't go and, and, and hang ourselves. But a lot of these kids who are being bullied are committing suicide at, at levels and rates, and they're talking about how it has increased, but... You know, these days are different. So this generation is different. I'm saying, Lord, protect our kids from what we went through because we were stronger, seems like. But the Bible tells us that every generation becomes wiser but weaker. I got this phone. When my other phone got smashed because it fell off the back of the car and they ran over it a thousand times on the highway, I got this new phone. And the man told me this phone was fourteen hundred dollars. I said, man, I just bought a laptop for my daughter for school with all of this gig and RAM, and it was three hundred and fifty. You mean I should just take her computer and just walk along the side of the road up in my head? <laughs> but I've seen two-year-old kids take these phones and open it up and play all kind of stuff and swipe it and do all that and I'm still trying to figure out how to get to solitaire. 
every generation wiser, but we, excuse me, wiser. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Finish up. Okay. Why is it the weaker? For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Now, I, don't, I can't have the mind of God, but I'm supposed to have the mind of Christ. How can I have the mind of Christ if the Bible tells me let this mind be in in, in let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. But Christ said, I have the mind of God. Because I'm both man and God. I am full human and full divine. You all remember when he says, let this mind be in you. But it says he, he counted it not robbery to be equal with God. So, Lord, you're telling me I can't have your mind, but you want me to have the mind of Christ. Well, I get the idea, and, and you all kind of follow me here. He tells me to let the mind be in me which was in Christ Jesus. But in reality, we cannot fully have Christ's mind because we are not fully divine. Amen. The same way God instructs us to be perfect, but God knows that we can't be perfect. But we ought to strive to be perfect. He says, be ye holy for I am holy. Well, we know that God is holy all the time. How many of us in here are holy all the time? Nobody? Ain't, ain't, no, ain't nobody? Wow. I just knew one of y'all was going to raise your hand. I had the one in mind. No, not me. <laughs> I'm far. Far from holy all the time. But, If God has given us these commands, be holy, be perfect, be righteous. First of all, the Bible says we are the righteousness where? In Christ Jesus. So on our own, we are not righteous. The Bible says specifically on our own, we are as filthy rags at our best. But we are righteous in Christ Jesus. So if he says, let this mind be in you then we understand, first of all, there is a permission that's given. You all understand that, right? You have to give God permission to enter into your mind. If he says, let this mind, then there is a part that you have to play in order to have that mindset. Does that make sense? How then do you let that mind be in you? Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, we're going to start at verse 1 and I believe uh, conclude with verse 2. This is very familiar, right? Everybody is, uh, for folks who have been in church for quite a while, you, you've heard this, this particular scripture. I beseech you or I appeal to you or I urge you, I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That's your reasonable service. Now, here is the part. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, here we are again talking about the mind. If you're not supposed to have your own mind, but you can't have God's mind, but you should have the mind of Christ. So, not your mind, so, not your will, God's will, but you can't have God's mind, but you are supposed to have the mind of Christ. How? By the renewing. How do we renew the mind? We have to reprogram it. So, the renewing of your mind is all about the programming. The programming comes by the information that you put in. 
Now, I, I wanted to take you then. I want to take you to 1 John. And, and this is probably where uh, we'll conclude at tonight, possibly on this particular series. It's just, it's, it's too hard. <laughs> it's too hard and I see now why. You all, I'm not, a, I'm not a big reader. It's, it's hard for me to read. Uh, I'm not a bad reader. In other words, I, I can read, but reading is not my forte. I read two or three pages, and my wife comes and wakes me up and asks me how far did I get. And I tell her, to, you know, those two or three pages. Uh, or I'll read a whole chapter, but I have no clue what I read. I have to go back and do it all over again and almost write it down in order to get something. But I don't bought books to try to further my understanding, uh, the psychology of God and thinking God and all of that. But they're still, it sounds like what I was talking about, but I see even in their books, they ain't giving no more. <laughs> and I see why, again, who can? Who has the ability to think truly like God? How can you explain such a phenomenal cosmic being? And if he said that you can't, remember that the word of God says, let every man's word be a lie, let God's word be true, before any jot or tittle of this word becomes null and void, heaven and earth will pass away. If I had the ability to do what I set out to do, the end of the world would be here. God would call it to end. I didn't know that. I wasn't trying to supersede God. I wasn't trying to make his word null and void. I was trying to give us an understanding. But how many of us have been hell bent on trying to do something that is totally against what God has told us to do or has shown us? Even with the best of intentions. You all know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I said I'm trying to keep, I don't ever want my kids to get hurt. I, you, you can get them helmets, elbow pads, knee pads, all of that, and put them on the bike. They're going to hit the one part that ain't covered. They're going to get hurt. You can't, there are some things no matter what you just can't stop. So I'm, I'm understanding that trying to get you to comprehend God may never come to fruition. It's, it's too much for us to comprehend. Even Paul, you all remember when Paul said uh, the thorn in the flesh? Anybody remember Paul? He got the thorn in the flesh. Uh, uh, three times he asked God. Anybody remember why, uh, why Paul got the thorn? Can anybody uh, tell us why Paul got that thorn in his flesh? Paul got the thorn in his flesh to stay humble. Why? Why did he need to be humble? Anybody remember? Huh? God gave him an unusual knowledge of the word. An unusual amount of revelation. And because God gave him such an unusual revelation, he said, so that I would not boast in my knowledge, God gave me this thorn in the flesh so that I would stay humble, so that I would not become conceited. So even with the knowledge that Paul got, understand that for every amount of knowledge that God gives you, there is going to be some reckoning that you're going to get with that knowledge. But everything that you learn about God, remember, what, the Bible says that I may know Him, right? Y'all can somebody finish the scripture? That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and, you see it. 
the fellowship of his sufferings. There is no power without suffering. You cannot know God and, and receive. The knowledge of God brings power. The power brings suffering. And Christ had to ex experience power for suffering. Many of us are asking for, you know, I want the knowledge of the tree of good. Y'all, I need y'all, y'all, y'all gotta work with me. Y'all gotta work with me. I took a nap earlier, but I still gotta work with me. With that tree, what came with the tree? The knowledge, the, the tree of good and evil. You, you can't split that tree in half. You're not just going to get the good. In that tree came both. You cannot flip a coin that's not manufactured incorrectly and get heads all the time. There's always two sides to every coin. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Science tells us that when I push on the wall, the wall pushes back. I don't have time to go into the physics and all of that information, but if the wall did not push back, then the wall would move every time I pushed it. So there has to be a force pushing it back against me for the force that I'm pushing. You all remember when Jesus uh, went into the boat, went to sleep, and the Bible says there was a great storm, right? When Jesus came up, what did he bring? The Bible says after he came, there was a great storm, and then it said there was a great calm. God never brings less than what Satan brings and vice versa. Satan, if, if for every time God blesses you to a level, Satan is going to come up to that level and meet you. The Bible says 100% or 100-fold will you be blessed with persecution. In this lifetime. So why do you still think that God is going to bless you 100 fold and people ain't going to talk about you? Why do you get mad when folks talk about you when you're being blessed? It's part of the, it's part of the package. It comes with the territory. First John. Let's, let's go to First John chapter 4, 1 through 16. Everybody there? We all there together? Huh? Yeah, I got it written down. First John chapter 4, we're going to read down one. I, I really, our key verse is 16, but this is going to lead up to it. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, you all remember when we did our lessons on trying the Spirit by the Spirit, and we were talking about false prophets and all of that. Many people misunderstand, and, and they think when they say try the Spirit, they talk about, I have the Spirit of discernment, and I can tell if, if you feel in some kind of way, and, and, and try the Spirit, the Bible, Jesus says, my words are, huh? My words are spirit and they are life. So if you are going to try the spirit, if somebody tell you I am of God and they tell you things that's outside of the word, you will see in just a second that's a lie. Many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Remember any, he said, Every spirit that confessed that Jesus came in the flesh is of God. Try the spirit by the spirit. The word was made flesh. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible is Jesus Christ. This, if you really want to get to know Jesus,
your best friend right here. Stop telling me that you want to get to know Jesus, but you don't ever read the Word. Never? You, you, you don't know nothing about it? And you can't do it through osmosis, y'all. Don't think that you can just go to sleep on this, and, and it's going to infiltrate you. Now, you, you can put the, the audible Bible on and listen to it as you sleep. You're not going to get as much. But I, I do believe, in, at least surrounding and allowing it to feed into your subconscious, I do believe that. <clears throat> every Verse 3, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Many people are wondering, when did, it, when did the Antichrist going to come? Anything that is against God is the Antichrist, first of all. That, that's by definition. And anything that is not of Christ is anti-Christ. How many little antichrists do we got in this building tonight? Every nine men, every last one of us have become or have been the antichrist. Whenever you sin, you are operating in the spirit of the antichrist or Satan. Verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak, or therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear them. We are of God. He that know God hears us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. If you want to know, and, and, and verse 16 is going to reiterate this, uh, verse 8 is going to reiterate this. Uh, it, 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 this is a constant theme, but do you all remember when we were studying the Bible? And when I when I say studying the Bible, I mean, like, we were talking about how many books are in the Bible, uh, who are the authors of the Bible. We did a complete year of studying each book and what the, anybody remember, what is the overall theme of the Bible? Love. If you cannot see love in what you are reading when you read scriptures, then you are missing the point. Even when you read about the discipline, it's love. Even when you read about uh, uh, the famine, it's love. Even when you read about uh, uh, the, the 400 years of slavery, it's love. You, make, you have to look for the theme when you understand it. You all understand what I'm saying there? If you don't know what you are reading or, or what you are supposed to get out of it, then you'll be looking for the wrong thing. And let me tell you something, something that I learned uh, here again, when my dad told me this, I thought, you know, old man, don't know what he's talking about, picking cotton, tobacco chewing back in the day, don't know nothing, you know, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus loves him, but he, he's, he's clueless. But he says, son, if you seek, the Bible says, seek and ye shall find. He said, if you seeking for trouble, you're going to find it. If you looking for something wrong, you will find it. The word of God is true whether it involves the positive or the negative. So if you are reading into a situation, somebody say hello and, and you think, oh, you don't like me? I just said hi. Yeah, but it was the way you said it. I know, I know what you meant. Don't play me. I'm not stupid. Okay, uh, bye. You know, there are people who we don't like and we know they don't like us, so anything they say has to be part of the I don't like you story. You know what I'm saying? Nothing good can come from Trump. And if you say anything good about Trump to an individual who hates Trump, you must be a Trumper. 
You know, you you talk about a Mac. Well, there were some good things that he did. You all, I, I, Obama, President Obama, love him. But there's a lot of stuff that I don't like that President Obama did. There are some agendas that he made promises. He kept his promise to, to groups of people who helped him become elected. But I don't like the agenda that, that, that he pushed. If you look for something bad, you will find it. You all, when you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, ask, what does this have to do with love? What's love got to do with it? <clears throat> Let's keep reading. There, uh, where are we at? Verse 7. Let's, just in case. Beloved, let us love one another for the for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and His love is perfected in us. Hereby no we that uh, know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. I'm reading all of this to you because I'm trying to let you know if you really want to know God, you can. There is nothing that's stopping you from knowing him, but you have to know what comes with it. I'm sorry to tell you that we, in some instances, we've been lied to. And we've been lied to by churches who were trying to maybe do the right thing. They were trying to, the, the church sometimes have been like the used car salesperson. I want to sell you this car. I want you to join church. I want you to accept Christ. And either they just didn't, some really didn't know any better, but some didn't want to tell you the truth. Brothers and sisters, my recruiter, when he came to me, wanted me to join the military, and he didn't care at what cost. He didn't tell me that they was going to, you know, all the stuff that happens in boot camp, oh man, you'll be fine. Piece of cake. Easy. It's just like a big Boy Scouts. Everybody's happy, smiling. You get three meals a day. They, they, you don't have to pay for where you sleep. They made it sound real, real good, but didn't give you the, the real nitty gritty. You all understand what I'm saying? A lot of churches have taught people, when you accept Christ, everything is going to get better. It's going to get better when you accept the Lord. You're going you're gonna to have joy, unspeakable joy. It'll be like fire. Shut up in your bones. They don't tell you that as soon as you accept Christ, Satan is coming after you with everything he got. They don't tell you, you know, I hear many people that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and they stop. It wasn't until a few years ago when I kept reading and saw that there was no period there. There was a comma. There was a continuation. They keep telling us all of the good things. The Bible says you will suffer. For as much as Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God shall deliver us out of them all. Brothers and sisters, there's... Yeah. There, 
as many blessings as you get, All right, there's going to be just as much opposition. Every time you go to get blessed, Satan is coming. Don't misunderstand that. But a lot of churches, because they want you to accept Christ, and I want you to accept Christ too, but I can't do it under false pretenses. I can't tell you it's just it's gonna be all good. You're gonna you're gonna accept Christ and you'll get a new car. I'm like Oprah, everybody look under your seats, new cars for everybody. No, 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 if, if you look under your seats, there's hell right there, and it's just for you. It was designated. It was made with you in mind. Everything that, that you deal with. The Bible says by his stripes, we are healed. I called my daughter yesterday and I said, Babe, well, let's come on, we need to watch our show. She said, Daddy, I need a little while. This migraine is, is, is killing me. I'm just, I'm sitting in this dark room just trying to make the pain go away. Brothers and sisters, my heart dropped. Lord, why can't we just go and believe the blood of Jesus? Why can't we just hold hands? He says, pray. Anoint them with oil. Pray the prayer of faith. If there's any sick among you, let them call from the elders of the church. Lord, why can't we just do this and everybody be fine? Why can't we just go in here to everybody who's not feeling good? If, 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 if I prove everybody in here paying tithes, then here's a hundredfold blessing. That's not how it operates. I wish I could take all of the pain and all of the sickness and all of the worries and 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 and, and everybody, uh, Abraham, whoever bless you, I'm gonna bless them. Whoever curse you, I'm gonna curse them. I want everybody to bless me so I can bless everybody. Uh, it don't work like that. I really wish that it did. But do you all remember when they were talking about the people who had faith in Hebrews chapter eleven? In Hebrews chapter 11, they were talking about all the people who were blessed by the faith that they had. But then the second half of Hebrews 11 talks about all the people who had the zip. It says, by the, by the same faith, these had faith and they were burned. They were torn apart. They lived in caves. They ate locusts. By the same faith, uh, uh, they died, they were tortured, they were martyrs. It, it made sure to say, by the same faith. So brothers and sisters, everybody everybody ain't going to get to live in, in a, a four-story house with 16 rooms. But that don't mean you don't have faith. Everybody is not going to be healed uh, on this side of all of their diseases. Everybody in here knows about, who do you think had the most faith or performed the most miracles or had the most power besides Jesus Christ? Anybody, uh, all of the prophets and, and apostles or whatever in the Bible, who do you think was the most well-known, had showed the most power, uh, miracles and whatever? Anybody, who do you think? Moses, Elijah, Abraham, I would go, I would venture to say, when you look at miracles and the miracles that were performed, Elijah probably, uh, you want to talk about calling down fire from the heavens, consuming the altar, burning up, burning up the the, the meat offering, burning up the stones, burning up the dirt, after it had been soaked in water with 12 buckets of water on top of it. Elisha. But how did Elisha die? Anybody remember? No. So Elisha, Elijah, and Elisha, or 
however you want to call it. Yeah. One was taken away in uh, in the chariot. The other one died. And remember, he asked God, the one who was left, whether you say Elijah or Elisha, the second one asked God for a double portion of what the first one had. But he died through illness. Remember the Bible says that he got sick, he died, and they buried him, and they put his bones into a cave. You all remember? And then there was a war, and one of the, 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 the soldiers was killed. And they took, so that they didn't leave his dead body on the field, they took his body and threw it in the cave. Unbeknownst to them, it was the cave that had the bones of the prophet Elijah. The Bible says when the dead man touched the bones, he came back to life because of the anointing that was in the bones. Now, if the anointing in the bones resurrected the dead man, why didn't they keep the man from dying? So it had, brothers and sisters, your being healed has nothing to do with God's ability. And it has nothing to do with your anointing. It's God's timing. When it is your time, it's your time. And no, I don't believe what other folks are saying that, you know, everybody got to die with something. No, I don't believe that. I will tell you this. It irritates me when I ask the doctors what happened and they said he died of heart failure. No, really? <laughs> don't all of us die from heart failure? You ever seen a dead person with a live heart? <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's a pet peeve of mine. Let's keep reading. <laughs> All right. Uh, where are we at? I think we read verse 12. Let's go to 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he is in us because he hath given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed that believe the love that God hath to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in, in love dwelleth in God and God in him. This is King James. What's the matter? Did I say it? 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 Did anybody else hear me say I'm over in any other thing on this one besides the King James? I, I thought I said in this one we were reading from the King James Version. But all of the other, the other versions do or should say about the same and uh, the other versions for those who, who may not remember most of your NIVs, NLTs, and Amplifieds, uh, they are closer to the original manuscript, they are closer to the Aramaic and the Greek than the King James. The King James really uh, dumbed down uh, and, and made it more understandable and accessible uh, when King James basically did the rewriting of the scriptures and translated it into English. So uh, the, the English version, do you know that uh, my understanding, and, and if you research the, the Eskimos, the Eskimos have 30, over 30 different words for ice. Eskimos have over 30 different words for ice. We say yellow ice, black ice, whatever, because they live in that environment, they know more about ice, so they have words that their understanding far supersedes ours. We just say ice. But the reason why I'm saying that, in the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, 
where we say God and Lord, they've actually used the name of God that has the very specific meaning. So, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Uh, let us, and we, we translate us, and then they say Lord. Different Lords was actually the particular God, the, the, the Lord of... Uh, the Lord of the healing, the Lord of the, you know, when, when they talk about Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah, we just say Jehovah, but they actually had which Jehovah they were talking about. You remember we talked, uh, and we said there are nine, we had like nine different pages of the names of God, because the Hebrews, who had a very close relationship with God, every time God did something, they built an altar and gave him a name according to the altar of what he had done. You understand what I'm saying? So, their understanding, how they translated God, when King James wrote the King James Version, he didn't do all those translations. He just said, Lord. He said, God. We didn't know which Lord, which God, which personality they were referring to at that time. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, we was reading King James, but if you were reading New Living or NIV or Amplified, you are probably getting a better understanding anyhow. I just, I wanted to read the part where it says God is. I wanted to read the part where it says that we dwell in Him and He's in us. And, and I, I wanted us to be able to correlate that you can, you can understand God better than we do right now if you're willing to put in the work. We have to be willing and, and unfortunately a lot of people are not willing uh, for whatever reason. And I'm not passing judgment brothers and sisters. I, I love spending my time at night. Me and the wife, we, we watch the House Hunters and the International, uh, was it International House Hunters? And then uh, uh, Golden Girls and uh, NCIS New Orleans. I, I love my little sitcoms. I love my time to just get away and escape. Okay? If you green leaf or power or whatever, that's your thing. Whatever your thing is your thing. But if you really want to know more about God, you can put that TV down and pick up your book. If you really want to know more about God, you can put your, uh, your social media down and pick up your book. If you really want to know more, there are people who tell me, oh, oh, I'm really trying to better my life, I'm really trying to do this, and, 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 and uh, I'm, well, yes I am, I'm judging, I'm judging, some of you all, uh, yeah, how come all y'all won't accept my friend request on Facebook? <laughs> Because I, I'm going to your pages. Man, some of y'all got five pages too. I don't see why y'all that important. I guess some pages just for the, you know, the, the, the people who you really want to, to know you. You know, you got your Jesus is the Lord page, and then you got your other pages. And those are, are for your real close ones. But I'm going through and I'm reading some of your comments and some of your posts and all of that. And, mm, that ain't Jesus. But then you tell me, I, 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 really, I, I really want to know the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to say something, but my mama here. <laughs> and I know many times I start on something my mama with Junior. In other words, it doesn't sound like the Lord passed him. <laughs> But I don't understand why y'all hold me to sound like the Lord, but won't hold yourselves accountable to sound like the Lord. Do you know there is no difference between me and you? Hello? If you are a Christian, God holds you accountable to His Word just like He holds me. God don't have a heaven for preachers. I know one lady who told me that heaven was going to be segregated because she didn't like white folks. <laughs> oh yeah, she said because they were evil and they were mean that God, the same thing that they did, you know, whatever you do is going to come back on you. So since they segregated us, God was going to segregate them. 
And there was going to be a different heaven for white people and they was going to find out what it was like. And I asked her, are you on something? Do you? You on She wasn't joking. She, she was not joking. She wasn't saying it sarcastically. She meant that. And I told her, no, no, that, that, no, that ain't how that's going to work. It might be fair. Don't get me wrong. But no. Y'all, the, the, the same heaven that I'm going to be in, if you love God, now, there are different levels. Y'all better y'all find out. Do your Bible research. There are different levels. There are different crowns. There is a crown of life, and then there is different jewels and, and accessories on your crown. And you'll be able to tell those who are, who are the workers in, in the field. It's only 8 11. You want me doing that? Oh, Hey, we, we can take up an offer now. Good. I'd rather take 20 minutes on an offer. Give you plenty of time to give. So we'll, we'll, we'll do it now. Uh, uh, for those who are watching, hey, is anybody, is, is anybody commenting? Does anybody have any questions, comments? Because, again, I don't want to miss anyone's question or comment uh, on the live feed. But if you all would like to give, you can give uh, several ways to give. You can give using the Cash App. The cash App is dollar sign New Jerusalem 1977. You can also give uh, to, to access the Zelle app. You can use the phone number 314. 37 or oh, excuse me 314 uh, there are people who are still mailing in their their um, their offerings you can mail it to New Jerusalem number one North Dade Ferguson Missouri 63135 <coughs> uh, I want us to become closer to God because I truly believe we could get more done if we all were on the same page. Go to Acts chapter two. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if we can if we can close. Acts chapter two. chapter 2 verse 1 we can go from the King James let me know when you get it everybody got it Acts chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord and in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues, and the Holy Spirit came in. But the Holy Spirit came in on the day of Pentecost when everybody was in one place on one accord. Who was in this one place in one accord? First of all, all of the apostles, you all remember, Jesus told the apostles, minus, there's only 11 apostles right now, because Judas is dead, he hung himself, so it, people still talk about the 12, it wasn't the 12, they had to get a new one, but after, uh, after Jesus told them to go and tarry and wait for the Holy Spirit, but we're talking about the apostles of Christ. When they were in one place on one accord, do you all know how hard it is for God's people to get on the second page? If I could get, you know, I, I love the entire body of Christ, but I have to be concerned with my house. And, and God has placed me right now over this house. So as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, but I, I can't get people on the same page. I can't get the ushers and the and the the, the choir and the, the the deacon and the the men and the women and the uh, uh, the motherboard. I 
can't get everybody on the same page. Everybody got their own agenda, and it's not their agenda that I'm concerned with. And no disrespect, there's only one agenda in this building that is supposed to be the visionary. But everybody got their own agenda and their own thing. The disciples of Christ, the apostles, were all supposed to be in one place on one accord. But everybody, when, when I got one person who's wondering, um, you know, what, what time is service supposed to be over, I got another person who's wondering, uh, uh, well, what, what's happening at home? Who's, what show is on right now? Did he get traded? I wonder how LeBron's son is doing. Very seldom to ever can we all get on one accord. What would happen if Jerusalem was on one accord? Did you all see that young man Sunday uh, when I was giving the demonstration? You all, I didn't instruct him what to do. It was the Spirit of God in what we might consider the unlikeliest. He, he is the newest convert, if you will, in our men's group, but out of the men that were with us, nobody thought, and I'm not putting that on them because I didn't instruct nobody, but it just worked out perfectly how when I was on my knees down trying to figure out how to make this thing work, he came and he came up, and when he came up, God gave me revelation of, we walk by faith. Because I'm just thinking, we as in the group. I didn't think that this was a faith walk that we're all in together. I hadn't put it together like that. God showed me through him. But what if we were all in this place on one accord with the same mind? I love the power of want. You all ever watch any of those shows about the, the, the Siamese twins who are joined at the head? They were talking, uh, the, the one famous couple that I'm thinking of, uh, the two girls, they're joined at the head. They don't have to talk to each other because they share the same mind. When one thinks, the other hears the thoughts, and they just correspond because they share the same mind. So she can do on this side and tell this one on this side what to do, and they're working in tangent on one thing. Even twins who are separated, even though sometimes they feel the same, they don't literally share the same mind. God says we can have the same mind if we are all in the spirit. So when they were in the spirit, in one place on one accord, that's when the manifestation of the Holy Spirit came in. What can we do? Now, that's just here. What would happen if the whole one Lord, one faith, one baptism really became one? What if there were no more Baptists? What if there were no more Church of God, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Seventh-day, uh, uh, Catholic? What if all of them who said that we understand Jesus Christ his resurrection, or his crucifixion and resurrection, what if we all became one? The Bible says, by this will they know that I have sent you. That's why Satan keeps bringing us apart. And this is my problem when it comes to the church. Where are we as the church? We would spend more time fighting in this building amongst ourselves and, and, and all of that then coming together. We will find more reasons to be apart than to come together. What could we do? And this is why I'm trying to get us to have that mind, to have the mind of God. Uh, everything when God talks about, He talks about unity. Brother and sisters, how good it is for us to dwell together in unity. And he gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into unity. Everything that we do, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, so that we can unify, provoking one another into love. Everything that God talks about is us becoming unified and 
everything that we do is breaking us apart. Y'all can still say amen. This, this ain't a lecture. I'm not, I ain't mad. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get you to see where we are and why we are where we are. There is that vision. The apostles, the, the, the disciples was fighting amongst themselves on who was going to sit where with Jesus. Jesus said, that ain't even mine to give. And it's not even important. Why y'all? Why y'all fussing over who's going to sit on the right and on the left? Y'all more con concerned with status. We took the pulpit away because preachers was concerned with who was going to sit next to the pastor. And if I sit next to him, then that must mean I'm next in line. There were people who left the church when they, when my brother and I accepted our call into ministry, ministers left because they thought that they was going to be next in line for the big seat. And when my brother and I accepted our call into ministry, they just figured, well, there goes that chance. Let me go somewhere else and see what seat I can sit in. Some people won't join the choir because they think they ain't going to shine. If I won't get the lead role, then I won't see. Y'all, we, we, we are so, so backwards. I asked Brother Ben to be my armor bearer. Some of the men thought also, so he your buddy? Hell longer, I come here and ask me. I didn't want you. <laughs> I'm here to do the work of God to the best of my ability, and I ain't got time for your feelings. We got work to do, you all. We need to get out of this building and get out into the streets. It's not in here. Hopefully the majority of the people that's in the church is saved. Our job is to go out into the streets where the people are not saved and bring them in. So all the people that we got a problem with that's acting all funny and funky and all that with their attitudes and all of that, yeah, them, them the ones we need to go get. But no, you want to stay in here with people who you say got your same mind, in which we don't. You know, because we know how to worship. And when we play the right music, we know what to do. And when I say, uh, uh, well, I forgot what I'm supposed to say. Um, God is good all the time. Y'all supposed to say? Okay, six of y'all know what y'all supposed to say. But, if, you know, if I go out in the world and I say God is good, they say, yeah, maybe not, not, not so much, uh, not today yet. <laughs> They don't know what to say, but that's good. I'm not looking for cliches. I'm looking for converts. So let's go find the people who don't know what to say and help them learn what to say. But if I put some scriptures out there, most people in here ain't going to be able to finish them either because we don't know our word. We might know some cliches, and unfortunately, We've been teaching way too many cliches that, it, you know, the Bible says, come. Y'all, please hurry up and finish that. Don't leave that right there. Please don't let that be right there. Y'all, yeah, supposed to say the Bible says, come as you are, right? say that. And up until maybe six or seven years ago, I thought the Bible said come as you are. But it doesn't. I thought about the Bible, you know, I thought ushers was in the Bible. They're not. The ushers asked me to preach for their annual day. And I'm looking for ushers in the Bible. Didn't realize it wasn't none. Certainly wasn't no ushers either. 
But all my life, I've been told they were called Ursers. I just didn't realize everybody in my family who was in the church was country. <laughs> I've been spelling it all wrong. U R S H E R S. Ursers. We have to do better. We, we, we have to do better. Uh, and I need you all to help us. Have a mind for outreach. Brothers and sisters, this weekend is the Unity Weekend. And we are going to be, <coughs> we're going to be at the YMCA on Sunday. Service gets out here and, and at 12.30 we're going to be there with them from 12.30 to 2 to kind of help get things set up. And then from 2 to 6 we're going to be there to be the God portion. They're talking about unity but they're doing unity from the world standpoint. They're talking about bringing the first responders and the police and the community together. That's great. But without the presence of God, it, it equivalates to nothing. If God is not involved in it, if, if, if we are not letting our light shine, then they are going to be a, a group of well-solidified sinners. That's not what we're calling for. We need to go into the highways and the hedges and compel men and women. And that's what we were, that's why the mayor asked us. They asked us and First Baptist Ferguson to come together as the black church. Uh, I'm grateful and, and then not so much, but understand what I'm saying. They asked the, the, the church that is well known in the community as far as the white church is concerned and New Jerusalem. You all, they didn't have to ask us. We didn't have to have that kind of favor. But they asked us if we will come together and, and be the unified white and black church so that people can see God not in a color, but God in spirit. And how we operate in tangent as the church is concerned, coming together for a city that was divided over race. Ferguson, first of all, was not the racial hotspot, but because it was a white police and a black guy, and I can't, I refuse to go into uh, if if we were doing our part. There are people, there are black folks who have gotten killed, and people who have gotten killed by the police who was doing exactly what they were supposed to do, who, who, who had their hands on the steering wheel and didn't move, and the police still shot them, who were literally with their hands up. But they used the Mike Brown scenario of hands up, don't shoot. But according to the science, the forensics, Mike Brown did not have his hands up. They're, they're trying to, to, to put something... They wanted to bring division in our community. And there are professional agitators who are sent to Ferguson every year. They are paid agitators who are sent here to cause hell during the uprising. There are people who just want to walk the streets and, and quote unquote civil protest. And they send people inside of those groups to start trouble. Professional, paid. It's proven. We know who they are. Our job for this unity is not just to allow the people to say we're going to be, you know, we're going to become one with the community. Let them see God in this community. Let us invite them in. There is enough unsaved people within two blocks of Jerusalem that don't go to church nowhere to fill this building up twice. Within two blocks, we don't we don't need to go to other people's churches, and and I don't need you to to you know ask people to leave their church to come over here to your church and visit. We don't need to take nobody's member. There's enough unsaved people right here for us to minister to. So that's what I'm hoping that we can do. Uh, you all, I, I would rather leave here, go to Golden Corral, eat a bunch of food, go home and kick my feet up and watch TV and chill for the rest of the evening.
Because I, I got to go to work just like y'all do. But that's not what God is calling us to do. I know it's inconvenient. But I'm asking you all to please, um, when they say sacrifice, give God the sacrifice of praise. I'm asking you to sacrifice some of your time and help us to do this. When you wonder why Jerusalem doesn't grow, it's because we're not going out and compelling men and women. Yeah, I know you said you invited somebody and they said they was going to come. Except you continue. Then are you my disciples. God bless you. God keep you. This concludes our series on the psychology of God. I hope that you've gotten something out of it. As, as much as I got out of trying to teach it. Uh, I want to say again to our yes. visitors, I'm so Amen. grateful for you all. Uh, it means a lot that you all are coming back. You all, it's great when someone comes to your restaurant for the first time, but it says something uh, extremely better when they come back the second time, Amen. and the third, and the fourth. Uh, that means whatever is on the plate, and, and, and unless they're doing surveillance for like the FBI, I don't, I'm, I'm not on the most wanted list anymore. Um, so, I'm grateful. I'm, 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 I'm so thankful that you all have come. Uh, at, at some point, I might even ask you, I might be so bold as to actually just come out and ask you all if you would be willing to, to be a part of this ministry. But, I will ask that you pray about it and ask God and, and wherever God leads you, that's what, that's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to do. But, uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, uh, we'll say good night to all of those who are watching. We'll see you all uh, on Sunday morning if you're local, uh, on on our live stream. Certainly back here next week at uh, seven o'clock p.m.